All right, YouTube, as the DNC's own convention closes in, uh, there's been a noticeable increase in the number of several different types of people online that I'd like to refute here uh, with my own analysis, with my own understanding of politics, um, which is substantial, as you saw through the primaries. Other than Wisconsin, Wisconsin's an oddball. I can't account for that. Um, but it's better than Nate Silver did. It's better than, better than Sabato did, so I'm not going to beat myself up too much. Um, it's time to speak to those who think that Hillary will win, both because they're, they're actual Clinton fans, which I've, I've finally encountered two or three of them online. It's difficult to find them, and I think some of them might be paid staffers, but apparently uh, at least a few of them do exist. Uh, second to people who are essentially they're pessimistic Republicans or pessimistic libertarians who think she's going to win anyway. She'll rig the election or whatever. People were telling me the same thing. Let me dispel that first. People were telling me exactly the same thing during the Republican primaries regarding Trump. Oh, they'll rig it for Rubio. They'll rig it for Jeb. They'll rig it for Cruz. Did that work for them? No, it, it obviously didn't. Um, that's and consider this. And I've said this for quite some time. The two-party system does not generally rig the general election. They don't need to. They're not set up to do so. They have no real contingency plans for doing so beyond the most limited of scopes and maybe a couple of the really close swing states. <clears throat> Outside of that, they're not set up to. Why? Why would they not need to rig a general election? Because there's only two fucking parties. All they have to do is rig the primaries, make sure that both candidates are controlled opposition of some sort or another, like Jeb versus Hillary, and everything works out just fine. That's all they need to do. But Trump battled literally his own party, the Democratic Party, most of the media, and a considerable proportion of the uh, RNC's donor base over the course of this. The amount of money sunk into trying to defeat him, I think, cost far more almost, than even waging a halfway decent general would go. As such, I do not believe that he is controlled opposition. I think, honestly, he's the one that got away. That's why so many of the donors have backed off. Uh, some of the party insiders are still trying to remain silent about it. They don't really want to support him. They don't want to oppose him, but they also don't want to support him. I think they're trying to cut their losses and hope Hillary wins the election. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the Bush family actually physically and literally jump on board with the Clinton camp, uh, which would probably, or, or at the very least, uh, not endorse Trump. She probably would ask them not to endorse her. They'd come to her and say, hey, we want to support you because we need to keep the establishment, the two-party system going, the big donors going, Citizens United going. And we know you're not actually going to repeal Citizens United. And she'll say, okay, well, you can support me by giving me money through a super PAC and not doing anything further and make sure your names aren't directly associated with that super PAC. That's essentially what would be done. And this happens all the time in U.S. politics. But let me tell you why I think Trump is going to win. Beyond simply general elections are actually relatively fair in this country, specifically because there's never really been a need in modern uh, political history for the two parties to attempt to rig the primary. They simply, ha I mean, to rig the general. They just have to rig the primaries to make sure that whoever comes out on top is a corporate bank class sort of candidate, somebody who will take the big money, easy enough to control them, give a kickback to whichever firm supported that specific insider candidate. And it's like a little contest that they have every once in a while. It's not really an election. Uh, when you're voting between, you know, uh, George W. Bush and Al Gore, it's not really an election. They're essentially the same thing. They're controlled by the same sorts of people. Uh, and those that lose out, they just lose some money. It's like gambling to them. But I think Trump has them stumped and will win. Specifically, people, uh, when they oppose this idea, when they say, well, Hillary will win anyway, they often point to demographics. Demographics mean absolutely nothing during a paradigm shift. If that were true, then one party or the other would be perpetually in control without any opposition. Also, look at the composition right now of the House and Senate. They are controlled by Republicans. This shows me that as recently as the last midterms a couple of years ago, people obviously didn't hate the Republican Party quite that much. Indeed, uh, partially because of lower turnout, yes, they won the majority of seats in the House and the Senate. Do you honestly think for a moment, <clears throat> this is a rhetorical question because we all know the answer, 
that Hillary Clinton, who is several decades older than Obama, white, less far to the left than Obama, generally ranked as 20 or 30 points less trustworthy than Obama, and hasn't even solidified her own party's backing because of the DNC scandal now uh, increasingly, is going to capitalize upon turnout as high as Obama did in either election? The answer is no. It doesn't matter how many speeches Obama gives to support her. A lot of people, uh, their ears are deaf uh, to those pleas to please come out and vote for Hillary Clinton. She simply is not as exciting. She's not as well-spoken as Obama. She doesn't have nearly as much youth appeal. I deeply question the concept that the millennial voters will pour out in droves for Hillary. I think anything but that will happen. I think they're going to pour out in droves for third-party candidates, and I think she will barely be beating Trump with them by the time that the election comes around in November, if she even is at all at that point. I think that Hillary Clinton has made a huge tactical error in choosing Tim Kaine, a, a centrist figure within the party, as her running mate. I do not hold with the wisdom that it would have been a worse idea for her to allocate Sanders or Warren to that post, especially because if she had, if she had quieted down the, the burnout sort of voters, the roughly one-third to 40% of the party that considers itself more, quite a bit further left than she does, she's a center-rightist within the Democratic Party. She's almost a blue dog like Jim Webb or Michael Flynn. She's just uh, not quite outside of the party yet, but she is a corporate candidate. A lot of the Democrats don't like that. They want outright socialism, or they at least want progressive liberalism. I don't see them flocking back to her because of her VP choice. I also think she's at a handicap when it comes, and I've spoken about this, in the debates. When it comes to the debates, I don't see her competing that well. She has been reclusive throughout most of this campaign, and large, she was unwilling to increase the number of debates by more than, uh, I believe it was, they increased it by two. Sanders wanted something like the insane number, like 30 debates or something. They got two extra debates, and they had to probably pay her a lot of money to get her to agree to those. She probably wanted no debates. Uh, she And keep this in mind, and here's probably... Uh, the icing on the cake as far as reasons why Hillary Clinton is at a, at a disadvantage within this election. She didn't trounce Bernie Sanders. Without superdelegates in the popular vote, yes, she won. She didn't trounce him, though. She didn't utterly crush him under. He did pretty well, uh, really, for a grassroots candidate. In order to do that, in order to, let's face it, not win by that great an amount, she needed the entire DNC to covertly attack her opponent under the table. She required a massive fundraising apparatus that dwarfs anything any Republican had facing off against Trump. She, her opponent was grassroots fed and was not well received by any voting bloc outside of, of whites and millennials. And yet her opponent did very, very well, even though she was securing like, what, 99% of the black vote a uh, massive proportion of the Latino vote, and yet her opponent managed to put up for a while what seemed like the fight of her life and almost managed to stall her out and force a brokered convention. Despite all of the advantages, her last name, her funding raising apparatus, the now exposed fact that the DNC was on board with her in 2008, of all things, and never wanted anyone to even challenge her. Despite all of these things, she didn't win in a landslide. She won by a much smaller margin than Trump did against more opponents, more viable opponents, who were part of that corporate apparatus. That combined with the fact that there's a paradigm shift underway, and the Republican Party is, I think, wise enough to change what they're saying, to change what they're doing, and go with some new blood within the party, somebody who has voted for Democrats before, somebody who has supported Democrats before, somebody who has former Democrats now on board with his campaign, somebody who doesn't really give a fuck about the gay marriage issue, has gotten past some of the moral issues, and is really focused on uh, sort of nativistic jobs and economic policies and, and keeping the country safe in a domestic sense as well as a foreign sense. They've really gotten past the Bushes and Romneys. Clinton is representative of the old guard Democrats, though. It couldn't be further from sort of the Trump movement. 
Trump represents the death of the neoconservatives within the GOP. Clinton represents the dying embers of the corporate centrist Democrats that almost got beaten by a socialist who also happens to be a Jewish atheist, as the DNC so fondly puts it. I do not think that she is capable, no matter how much money she raises, no matter how many crossover Republican donors back her, no matter how many ship posts her shills, which are paid very well to do this post online, I do not think that she has the capability, especially within the debates, to compete with Trump. I think that he will absolutely annihilate her in the first debate, and at that point he will pull slightly ahead of her. I don't see good things for her thereafter either. Her VP pick hurts her. It doesn't help her. Especially when, if she had chosen Sanders or Warren, it would have alienated parts of the centrist core of the party. But it would have forestalled the DNC leak scandal. It would have made it toothless, essentially. Because, hey, yeah, I kind of screwed Bernie, but look, he's my VP. Vote for me anyway. Christ, he'll be the next in line. He'll be in D.C. in an official executive capacity. What more can I possibly give you? I won. Just get over it. Or Elizabeth Warren, sort of Sanders like, hey, I've got a progressive on my team. It's a two-woman ticket. You're all socially progressive. You're just a bigot if you vote against me. And she'd browbeat him with that. And it might have actually worked fairly well. Who does she choose? Tim Kaine. The most boring possible VP you could have. Somebody who has already made several rather large mistakes in the last couple of days, uh, accidentally indicating that people should uh, kind of vote for Jill Stein if they're further left and they're a former Bernie fan or something like that. It uh, doesn't make him look that good. And Hillary herself almost bashed her own VP nominee by saying, oh yeah, he's boring and I like that about him. Well, no shit. I know he's boring too, Hillary. What are you trying to indicate here? I don't think it's going to work. I think Hillary will lose control of parts of the Rust Belt and it'll all be downhill from there. I think the first, at the first moment that it becomes clear that a state like Pennsylvania has begun to go red and shows no signs of switching back, when it becomes clear she's not really going to compete in Ohio and Indiana, when it becomes clear she's probably lost control of Florida, that's all the states he needs to flip. That gives him the election. I think right now he'd be at 299 versus 239, I believe it is. I also see Michigan switching over. Uh, now, this is subject to change. It could be that they enter the first debate. She completely outclasses him, crushes him into the dirt, and maintains superiority through the rest of the debates and into the general. I just don't consider that likely. And the thing is, Going into the convention when you have a raging scandal pissing off a fairly large minority of your party, in which several tens of thousands of them will show up in protest, is not going to look good. Hillary Clinton has built a large part of her recent campaigning on Trump is dangerous, violence follows him, he's unhinged. The RNC went off mostly without a hitch. There was no significant protest there. A lot of the protesters never showed up. Do you believe for a second that that will be the case at the DNC? I don't think so. I think Philadelphia is going to be an uproar. I think that several tens of thousands of people, more than I originally anticipated, are likely to show up because of the DNC leaks. It's the worst possible time for it to happen. You know that WikiLeaks held back until a little bit before the Democratic Convention to make sure that more people would be incensed going into it. They'd say, to hell with this. The DNC is so corrupt. I don't care if Hillary calls for... Debbie Wasserman Schultz to be kicked out. We're going to go protest. And a lot of them will do it because the never Trump forces within the convention may have still believed there's a chance at the last minute to change the rules and deny him nomination. Nobody outside thought that was a possibility. They got tired of it. There are still a surprising number of people who believe that Bernie Sanders is capable of forcing something to happen so that he gets nominated, especially with the DNC leaks right now. Julian Assange is, I believe, correct. The WikiLeaks leaks of the DNC's emails will probably largely contribute to denying Hillary Clinton the election. It won't be the only reason. Now, remember, before these leaks even began, before he even said anything about it, I said, Trump is in an advantage here. He's not in a demographic disadvantage. He's at a demographic advantage because all the business Democrats have abandoned the left or they've gone off to vote for Gary Johnson. 
and a lot of the far-left voters, especially the younger ones, are now supporting Jill Stein. That's a huge advantage he has over there. He's now drawing even in half of the Rust Belt. I said that's a key advantage. He's also more well-spoken. He has verbal errors constantly. But he delivers his message in such a way that people are captivated by it. What do you do when Hillary speaks? You tone it out. You forget what she's saying. You don't pay attention to any of it. We've all heard it before. But with Trump, there's still that part of your subconscious that says, what crazy thing is he going to say now? I better listen real close to what he has to say. And image matters too. When Trump delivered his acceptance speech at the RNC, he looked like he was already in office. Does Clinton look like she's already in office when she makes a speech? No, she looks like she's campaigning for office. When she speaks, does she come off as a little bit a little bit odd, a little bit off, or does she come off as a shrill harpy? The latter. Which one is preferable? It's much preferable to look at Trump. For Trump, it's preferable because when he speaks, people are captivated captivated by it. Maybe not for what he would consider the right reasons, but they listen to what he has to say. And all he has to do from here on out is not do crazy shit, and he's probably won the election. Hillary, on the other hand, would have to convince people she's not a liar. Now, how do you convince people who are convinced that you're a liar that you're not a liar? The answer is you can't. There is no way to do it because any evidence that you attempt to use will just be seen as another lie, even if you're telling the truth. Now, of course, I don't believe Clinton does that regularly, but if she were, if she actually were sorry for what the DNC did, if she actually did want to get rid of Citizens United, if she actually did want to clean up her act and, and do the right thing and, and have fa a fair campaign, not rig anything, not say stupid shit all the time, even if she did, people would still perceive her as untrustworthy. Well, she's screwed. It's a lot more difficult to label to get by than, oh, you're a bigot. Well, Trump is going to prove to people over the next couple of months that he's not a bigot. Trust me because that's priority number one for his campaign. Hillary, meanwhile, will be vainly trying to tell people, oh, I don't lie. Oh, I tell the truth all the time. It's Trump that's the liar. They're not going to see it that way, Madam Clinton. It's just not going to work. And her VP choice and the DNC leaks probably, uh, both within fairly recent history, in the last week, major, major deficits to the Clinton camp. I do not believe she will win the election. I believe... Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. I, I, I honestly believe that. I think you might as well congratulate him now because if nothing changes or if it changes in his favor, he's won. It would take a massive hit against his campaign in order to actually stymie him. It's obvious that out, out raising him doesn't work. Hillary's been doing that. She's been running ads in half the states that are now Trump states. She's been running ads in Pennsylvania and Florida. And they're about even. She was leading by 10 points in these states a few months ago. Now she's dead even with him despite running $10 million ad campaigns. Well, what gives? It's because nobody gives a fuck about ads on TV anymore. Half of us don't even watch TV. Why the hell does anybody care anyway? Do you pay attention to that shit? I, I see ads for like Bruce Lisman and Phil Scott and stuff too for like the Vermont governor. I don't pay any attention to those. When I see an ad by a candidate, half the time it makes me less likely to support them. Makes me disinterested in what they have to say. So it's the ghost of elections past. When you look at demographics, all you have to ask yourself is, do you think that somebody who's 20 years older and white and shrill is going to drive as high of turnout as Obama did in 2008? I don't think so. I don't think she'll get anywhere near the turnout levels that he got in 2012. I, I think it's a lost election for Hillary already, and a lot of people just haven't come around to that fact. That's about all. Peace out.